All right, so we are now live. Can you see me? Oh, no, you see my screen? Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let's go up to the do now. Okay. All right, so you see the do now, right? Yes. Awesome sauce. And I have two people that just came in. Hi guys, good morning. Good morning. I like I always say good morning, so good ladies are stopping loud. Alrighty guys. Now you guys are not gonna be hey guys. You guys are not gonna do so the do now looking at me. Alright, Rihanna, I'm gonna mute you, okay, boo? And I'm gonna uh -huh. I'm gonna mute you for a second. Okay. And I'm gonna unmute you when let me see. There we go. Okay, guys, so here we are. Let me know if you guys are not able to see things of that nature. So your do now is to explain the difference between weather and climate. DM your response or complete via uh, within Teams. If you finish early, please go to my Instagram page and review the NASA and National Geographic articles that are linked there. And we will begin at 1.07. Oh, that doesn't have a period. I don't like that. Uh oh. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you guys can see the screen, okay? I'm trying to play around with different colors. And the time is 1.03, so we'll start in about four minutes. We are on, well, we're not in the packet yet, babe, but we're going to be on the week five packet. And we're going to begin with talking about um, weather and climate, which is not stuff we're going to get directly out of the packet yet. As way overrated said. Good morning. Good morning.
Please don't mind the period that is missing right there. It's irking my nerves. <laughs> Hey Zion, wonderful to see you. All right guys, about two minutes, let's finish up. Hey Brooklyn. Hey everyone who I did not say hey to, please charge it to my head and not my heart. Huge shout out to Kadira, who has been in every single live since day one. Okay, guys, less than a minute. And we're going to get into it. Hey, All right, so your do now for today is to explain the difference between weather and climate. We're going to explain the difference first between weather and climate. Now, before we do that on computer screen, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. So when you're talking about weather, the, you're talking about short term changes outside, right? When you're talking about climate, you're talking about long term changes. So the weather describes the conditions outside, the natural conditions outside, on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why the weather report comes out on a day-to-day -day basis or like weeks at a time, right? The a climate, um, that is consistent. I know I saw that you couldn't hear me. A climate is gonna have consistent patterns over time. Climate change is something that's real and we'll talk about, but those are the that's the main difference, time. Okay, so weather, short-term, climate, long-term. So, the atmosphere, weather occurs, and also the climate, the things that, um, the forces that determine what a climate is going to be like, this all occurs in the atmosphere, okay? So, the atmosphere is the whole mass, body, or collection of air surrounding Earth. So essentially, it's the pocket of air that surrounds Earth. And by air, we mean collection of gases, okay? We mean collection of gases when we say air. Um, the atmosphere is mostly made up of nitrogen with some oxygen and other trace gases, meaning there's just enough um just enough of them to be found, just enough evidence to be found. So this entire pocket of air or gases around the earth is earth's atmosphere. And this is where weather patterns occur. Okay. Down here in this area, the troposphere. So 
Now, moving on to, so now that we know what the atmosphere is, so, hey, it's not moving. So, like right now, I am in Earth's atmosphere. I am luxuriating. Don't mind those jeans. I am luxuriating mm, in the delicious air <laughs> that I'm breathing in Earth's atmosphere. So, now, let's watch this video that I finally found. Or um, actually, well, not that I finally found, sorry, guys, that I got to work. And we have an article by National Geographic. And these are going to help us, these are resources that are going to help us explain the difference between weather and climate. So I paused it here and took a little screenshot because one of these lines represents weather and one represents climate. Remember, one represents the day-to-day -day changes, so kind of those fast day-to-day -day changes, and then one represents the climate, so more consistent patterns. Uh-oh. I think I forgot to put the clip in, but that's okay. We'll get it up real fast. So while that's loading, we're going to jump right into the article and we can come to the video. We can actually talk about the image that I screenshot. Okay, so weather or climate, what's the difference? Now, if you're on Teams or if you want to go live, and I'm going to unmute Rihanna. Rihanna, if you want to read, you are more than welcome to jump in. As you can see, I'm doing, I'm just doing my very best. It's not popping up. I want to unmute her, Lord. Oh, there she is. Hey, boo. Okay. So we're going to read. It's a short article. This is a grades five through eight article. So we're right on track. And weather or climate, what's the difference? I'm going to ask you to read. We're going to read these two excerpts here. We're going to read Understanding Weather. We'll do the best we can. I think you can see it good enough. And we're going to read Understanding Climate. All right? Can you see it? Can you see it? Because you're, you're screen sharing with me, aren't you? Um, right here? Okay, wait. I just... Aren't you able to see my screen? I can see you. You with your phone, but not the screen. Oh, really? Let's try. Okay. Some technical difficulties. Okay, Rana, I'm going to exit out and come back in, okay? Okay, now I can see your screen. You see my screen now? Okay. You do see it? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I thought you should have been able to. Okay, babe. So we're going to read... Understanding weather, and then we're going to read understanding climate below it. Okay, ready? All right, guys. I think I, 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 I only see you. I only see you and your phone. I don't see your screen. Okay. Like the thing. Yeah, I don't see it. I share my screen with you, but I don't see yours. Thanks for, okay, you should be able to see it momentarily. In a moment, you should be able to see the, okay. Now, can you see my screen now? She left. 
<laughs> okay. All right, Damari is in here. Damari, can you see my screen? It says they can see. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and read. Okay, so understanding weather. So I really went old. Can you see my screen? I can see now. Okay, babe, go ahead. And you just had to share it. All right. Understanding weather. So we're starting right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read, okay? Weather refers to the short... I'm going to go ahead and read it, babe. You could unmute your microphone, please. Hello, is anybody there? I can... Is my... She might be mute. All right, I'm sorry, babe. All right, yes, honey, go ahead and read. So, understanding weather. Weather refers to the short-term conditions of the lower atmos atmosphere, uh -huh. such as precipitation, temperature, hum humidity, wind direction, wind speed, and atmos atmospheric pressure. Good. It could be sunny, cloudy, rainy, foggy, cold, hot, windy, stormy, snowing. The list goes on. The sun drives different types of weather by heating air in the lower atmosphere at varying rates. Warm air rises and cold air rushes in to fill its place, causing wind. These winds, along with water vapor in the air, influence the formation and movement of clouds, precipitation, and storms. Good job. That's it or read more? Uh, read more, boo-boo. You're doing great. Thank the you. The atmospheric conditions that influence weather are always fluctuation, fluctuating. Good job. Which is why the weather is always changing. Meteorologists analyze data from satellites, weather stations, and buoys. Buoys, uh huh. Buoys to predict weather conditions over the upcoming days or weeks. These forecasts are important because weather influences may, many aspects of human activity. Sailors and pilots, for example, need to know when there might be a big storm coming, and farmers need to plan around the weather to plant and harvest crops. Firefighters also keep track of daily weather in order to be prepared for the likelihood of forest fires. Weather forecasts are also useful for military mission planning, for future features of trade, and for warning people of potentially dangerous weather conditions. Awesome, boo. So, Rihanna, tell me, honey, does this sound like the weather is something that changes, like, quickly? Or is it something that changes over a long period of time from what you just re read, the weather? I feel like it changes quickly. Okay, good. Tell me more. So, I feel like it changes quickly because when they say, like, so say one day it can be sunny, then possibly the next day it can be windy and it can start raining. And then they were uh -huh. talking about, like, how we should be pre prepare for it. And so, like, I think it's yes. like every day. So, I think it changes quickly. It's like a, a daily thing. I love it, girlfriend. And thank you so much for bearing with me. You know, it could be a little frustrating with this technology. And you guys have been so helpful and so awesome and so patient. So I want to really thank you for persevering because you are, you, you, you're really, you're really doing well. Hey, Jordan. Okay. So that is excellent. I hadn't even thought of that, that word prepared. So that tells us that the weather can change at any time, right? And it, it does, it changes quickly. It could be sunny one moment and sometimes out of nowhere, it could start raining and we might not have had a weather report predicting that. Awesome. Okay, so now let's read about understanding climate. So I think we're just going to read this part. Oh, you don't. I'm sorry, babe. You're not on live. We're going to read um just this first paragraph here. You want me to read it? Yep. While weather refers to short-term changes in the atmosphere, climate refers to atmos atmospheric changes over longer periods of time, usually defined as 30 years or more. This is why it is possible to have an especially cold spell as 30 years or more. This is why it is possible to have an oh spell even though on average global temperatures are rising. The former is a weather event 
that takes place over the course of days, while the latter indicates mm -hmm. an overall change in climate, which occurs over decades. In other words, the cold winter is a relatively small as small atmospheric perturbation Good job. within a much larger long-term trend of warming. So, and this really means change. Pertur perturbation, um, a disruption of equilibrium, so like a disruption of balance. Equilibrium is balance, so that means change. Good job, boo. Okay, so of course we know climate. So climate change, does that occur quickly or slowly? Climate change. I think slowly. Okay, tell me more. And then I'm going to, as so you're I telling me, I'm slowly. going to, I want you to I also, boo, um, talk about this picture I here. I'm sorry, baby. Talk about this picture here of this man and the doggy. Go ahead, Boo Boo. I'm sorry. So I think slowly because it can be a seasonal thing. Okay. Mm hmm. Like he said, um, a, a season, a cold season, a cold spell, he called it. So not a season, um, a spell um, can be 30 years or more. But, you know, you, so we talked, um, quickly about the word nuance, meaning that nuance means that there are subtle differences in different ideas. So like you just said season. Now we usually think of season as like summer, winter, spring, and fall. But season can also be used in different ways. You can say a holiday season. You can say the the vacation season, college, back to school season. So a season is a period of time. So excellent, you were you were right, and I I shouldn't have said that that was not correct because that is correct. Thank you, Boo. Okay, so now can you take us to this picture, and I'm gonna have Damari jump in to the um the next topic. Um, Rihanna, can you tell me, looking at this picture here, um, and this is a video that is also by National Geographic. It's kind of old. It goes into global warming. Global warming it is, is an example of climate change because it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Um, which one of these lines represents weather and which one, one represents climate? So I think the red one represents weather and the blue one represents climate. Okay, tell me why. So I think the red one represents weather because it's a straight line. Basically, it's like weather, like weather happens daily. Like one day can be sunny, mm. one day can be rainy. And I think, and I think the blue line represents climate because it looks like, like it's like it's like a long, uh, like a long line, which is like it takes a long period of time for climate to happen. I love your idea. I love your idea. So if you were writing that answer down, I you disagree would... with her a little bit. Okay, tell me. But but I like her idea. That's why it's good to always have some evidence and reasoning because you guys can have disagreements as long as you can back it up. No one can tell you that you're wrong because science is all about proving your theory. So what do you think, my love? I think that the uh, that climate is the red line and weather is the blue line because, like, um, the... Climate, it stays straight, like it's not going to change over over that course of time while you walking. The, uh, it represents how he's going to stay while he's walking. And then the blue line, it just goes up, down, and anywhere. And like, it's just changing everywhere it goes, just like the weather. Well, I, I, also, uh, I also agree with that, too. So, yeah, so... This dialogue is fantastic. I love the different ideas. Let's see what they thought in the video. And Rihanna, I like how you're open to okay. Demari's so ideas. Scientists were so good at making these dire or long-term predictions about the climate. How come we're so lousy? Okay, so he, he starts right off. I just want to tell you guys, he starts right off. And the first thing he says is, okay, so us scientists, we're so good about making long-term climate predictions. But why why can't we make those same kind of predictions with the weather? And then he goes on with his day. We're so good at making these dire long-term predictions about the climate. How come we're so lousy about predicting the weather? Besides, this year, we had a colder winter in my town. For all the scientists know, we could be in for global cooling. Here's the difference between weather and climate. Weather is what the atmosphere does in the short term, hour to hour, day to day. Weather is chaotic, which means that even a microscopic disturbance can lead to large-scale changes. 
That's why those 10-day weather forecasts are useless. A butterfly flaps its wings in Bali, and six weeks later, your outdoor wedding in Maine is ruined. Climate is the long-term average of the weather over a number of years. It's shaped by global forces that alter the energy balance in the atmosphere, such as changes in the sun, tilt of the Earth's axis, the amount of sunlight the Earth reflects back to space, and the concentration of greenhouse gases in the air. A change in any of them affects the climate in ways that are broadly predictable. My friend's meandering represents the short-term fluctuations. That's weather. It's almost impossible to predict what will attract his interest next. It's not hard to know what the range of his meandering will be, because I'm holding him on a leash. We can't observe climate directly. All we see is the weather. The average weather over the course of years reveals a pattern. I represent that long-term trend, which is climate. Keep your eye on the man, not the dog. Weather is hard to predict, like my friend here, but climate is predictable. Climate has changed many times in the long history of the Earth, but always in response to a global force. The strongest force driving climate change right now is the increasing CO2 from the burning of fossil fuels, which is trapping more heat from the sun. All that additional energy has to go somewhere. Hey. Some of it warms the air. Most of it ends up in the oceans. All over the world, the oceans are getting warmer. Okay, so, and as we mentioned when we saw the article, um, the National Geographic article here, they go into global warming. So when you guys think about climate change, you should think about global warming. Global warming is not something that happens overnight. So it's not like like rain just, can just pop out of nowhere. Global warming is happening over time. It's happening faster than it ever has before because of all the pollution. But... And that's what he just said, CO2 um, in the atmosphere, climate change. And that's a big problem. It's causing the sea levels to rise because the water is melting or the ice caps are melting and things of, of that nature. So, all right, this article is posted on my Instagram page, Rihanna and Damari. I wrote your names down on my very sloppily because I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do to treat you guys for this fabulous, um, fabulous part engagement that you guys are showing. So I will be doing that today. Something special for you guys. Okay, back to. Okay, so here we go. Damari, can you read sum up weather and climate for us, please? The day to day state of the atmosphere. Okay, awesome. Well, weather, the day to day state of the atmosphere, climate, prevailing weather patterns for a partially, well, particle, uh, part, uh, I can't say it, particularly. Particular? Region. Yeah, particular region. That's okay. Thank you. Awesome. So, and here we have a climate versus all that thinking, that thinking you're doing. I feel you. So, here we have a climate versus. Verse weather um, anchor chart. So climate is kind of what we expect. Like we know, for example, California is a warm area. Um, and then weather is what we get. Now, even though we know California is a warm area on average, that's why it's orange. Um, it might be sunny one day, windy one day, cloudy one day or rainy. I don't know that it snowed recently in California. It has snowed there before. That's not a good thing because um, that's not average. That's not normal for that climate. Alrighty. So, and then we just have some vocabulary that we're going to review from last time. Zamari, hit me. Altitude. Altitude, distant from sea level. Awesome. Altitude. Altitude has an effect on air temperature. The higher in the elevation a land mass goes, the cooler the temperatures. Awesome. So different parts of the land are going to have different temperatures. So um, down here on the bottom, is this going to be warmer or cooler than up here? So on the yeah. bottom, 
according to what they said, the higher in elevation a landmass goes, the cooler the temperature is awesome. So you just said warm. So it's going to be warmer towards sea level. Fantastic. And when we're talking about sea level, we're talking about the distance from sea level. We use sea level instead of ground because ground has too much of a varying, um, too, the, the degree is just too varying. So this is the ground under water. There's the ground on the top of a mountain. So sea level, um, the distance from that is altitude. So planes, they will say, oh, we're flying at such and such altitude, right? That's how high they are in the atmosphere. They can't go above this portion though, the trophosphere. Altitude is how high that plane is from sea level. Okay. Regional geography, Damari. Regional geography, the studies of specific regions of Earth. Okay, so we have some, here we have some regions that were broken down um, in the United States. Then we have some global regions that were broken down two different ways. All right. So Monday's review, we asked the question, do places that are the same distance from the equator have the same climate? And we didn't really answer that question because we started talking about climate and weather, which I think we got a great understanding of today. So we're going to investigate to answer that question now. Here's the equator, okay? And for example, here's a point. That's okay, I'll fix that. And here's a point. Now, looking at this, you would think that these two points on opposite sides of the equator have the same climate. Um, you might, you, but, but there are things that influence climate, not just the sun. There are other things that influence climate. So we're going to investigate now. Okay. So, and then, um, if you guys want to go further into climate zones, I wasn't going to play this today. I would like you guys to go on your own. I'll post this. This is going to give a little more explanation into what I explained, how the earth is broken down into different climate zones. As you can see here, the tropics are warmer. They're near the equator. The equator protrudes out more towards the sun. And if you zoom in on um, the different continents, these are going to be the areas that are closer to the equator. And if you zoom in on earth, I'm sorry, the United States, you can see as we get down further, these, of course, as we go down, are going to be the states that are closer to the equator, so they're warmer. Okay? So the page that we're on, guys, we're on the, uh, we are now going into the packet, and we are um, in the week five packet. And let me get my charger. Okay. So we are on, I hope you didn't see my big old mess. <laughs> My all the laundry I didn't do because I'm quarantined. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure you guys can relate. All right, so the packet's coming up. And we're on the week five packet. And okay, so. I'm going to ask you guys, I see it's 133. I'm going to ask you guys to please stay until about 150. Okay, so this is loading. Come on, packet. It was up. I don't know why it would have been. Okay, so we're in the week five packet and we're going to go into the investigation where we are going to be exploring two islands and we're going to compare their climates. Now, these islands, okay. I must have too much stuff up. Thank you guys for being patient.
All right, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm unable to tell you the exact page right this moment, but we are on... Because I have it pulled up in another area. My computer's timing out a little bit. I apologize. Let's see if it's loaded now. All right, awesome. So we're right here, guys. We're right in the beginning um, of the packet. We went through these questions here on Monday. And now we are on page... I don't believe it actually has the pages. So I don't believe it actually has the pages up, but we're on the page here where we're talking about ocean currents and we're gonna graph some data. So, all right, so we're on this page here. We have a question, hypothesis, and materials. So we're going to plan and invest. I'm sorry, we're going to plan and investigate the effect of ocean currents on climate. So now we know what climate is. Climate is that long term weather pattern in a region over time. So, guys, um, this actually, I don't see a page number on the bottom, but um, it's in the week, it's towards the beginning before the reading in the week five packet. So, okay, so we're going to compare the average climate data of two land masses, starting by stating a testable question. We're going to then also state a hypothesis, an if-then format of course, and we're going to list the materials that we need, and then we're going to move on. So, I have done that over here for you. So the question is, Damari, did you want to read the question? How an ocean current affects the climate of a landmass? That's supposed to say, how can. Sorry. So that was, no, that wasn't you. That was me. So how can ocean currents affect the climate of a landmass? Go ahead, Damari, next one. Hypothesis. If the temperature of an ocean current is warm, then a near land mass will be warm. If the temperature of an ocean current is cool, then a near land mass will be cool. Awesome. And that should be a lowercase I, by the way. Awesome materials. One current and climate. One climate comparison. One global current. Awesome. Current. So and we have all of that here in this packet. Okay. And our procedures. So I'm going to briefly read this to you guys. We're going to analyze the data that um, we have regarding Bovet Island and Clifton. I'm sorry, Bovet Island and Clifton in Ireland. And we're going to use the information to answer the question. We want to know how ocean currents affect um, land masses. And we believe that warm ocean currents will um, cause near land masses to be warm and that cool currents will cause near land masses to be cooler. That's what we think. So we have this information here about the two islands, both that island, which is near Antarctica, and here are the longitudinal and latitudinal lines. And then we also have information on Clifton Island, okay, and these are both over eight years. So, in your packet, your packet is asking you to graph the highest temperature and lowest temperature average each month um, over the eight years that both locations were studied. So that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna use it to answer the question and see if our hypothesis is either true or not true. So I'm gonna have, Damari is going to, let's see, this is gonna be kind of difficult without um, having both screens up at one time. So let me think, let me think, let me think. Okay, so we'll do it this way. You guys have in your chart, 
I'm sorry, in your packet. You have what I just showed you, and I have it up here on the screen. So, we'll start it together. I think I can get rid of this. Trying to get rid of stuff that's taking up space on my. All right, so I'm trying to bring this up live so I can type right into it for you guys. Okay, so for example, in January, the highest temperature was what Demar? what was the highest temperature in january um for bovet island what was it three three so you will go over to your chart and you will put in the number three for january there we go what was the lowest Zero. Do you are you do you have you have your packet, Rihanna? Yes. Awesome, guys. Okay, let's do it together then. Awesome. So February, the highest. Thank you, baby. Four. Awesome, the lowest. Let's check. The highest, yep, four up zero. And looking here, I know I've got four zeros right there. All right, so the lowest was zero for January, February, March, and April. And the highest for three, three four, and what about March? The highest for March? Both that island? Three. Three and the highest for April? Two. Two. Okay. Oh no. Okay. I was gonna say we're doing so well. All right, guys. So in the interest of saving time, that is how you will complete this first portion. You will come over here to your packet. You will look up both you look at the Bovet Island chart. You will disregard average rainfall for these purposes here, not entirely, just for filling out the chart because we're only looking at these two columns. You'll fold all the way across. Don't forget your negatives. Then we're gonna do the same for Clifton, Ireland. So the average maximum in January for Clifton, Ireland, guys, what was that? Let me double check, what was that? What was the maximum temperature in January for Clifton, Ireland. I'm highlighting it. Somebody put it in the comments. It was nine. It was nine. Okay, what about the lowest one? Come on, guys. 72. Let me see. What was it? 72. What? Come on, guys. What is it, boo? Three. All right. I was looking at the wrong thing. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. The high for February? So the high for February was... Oh, somebody... Jayon has his stuff. Go ahead, Jayon. So the high for February was what, guys? What was the high for February? Put it in the comments, please. What was the high for February? Not 57. So remember, babe, we're not looking over here at average rainfall. We're looking at the average maximum temperature and the average minimum temperature. We're only looking at this column here and this column here. Okay, so the average high temperature for February was what, Jayon? 
the average high for February? Nine. Nine. Okay, can you guys, are you guys paying attention? Can we work through this quickly? So the average high was nine. What was the average low? Okay, what about the average high for March? Eleven. And the average low? Four. Okay, the average high for April? Okay, and the average low? Four. Four. Awesome. So you guys will complete that. Um, all the way across. If you're watching TV, please mute your teams or turn it down, please, guys. So you're going to finish that all the way across. If you have questions, any further questions, let me know. So remember, we are not looking at the rainfall. We're not looking at that. We're only looking at the average maximum and average minimum temperatures. Now, um, when you finish your chart, it should look like this. We got up to April, so we had all of that. When you finish your chart, it will look like this. Okay? When you graph your information, it should look something... Already is it it looks like this already yeah okay yeah oh cool awesome okay so because the one i have online um i didn't have a graph i don't where'd you guys get yours from you guys get yours from miss strickland yeah your hard copy okay cool 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 awesome thank you for letting me know that um okay guys so tell me what do you see here can you analyze this graph for me since you guys have it, what do you see? First of all, is that. the climate exactly the same? Is it exactly the same? No. No. Okay. So now tell me what you see. Colors. I mean, color lines. Okay. What are they telling you? Like, what's some information you see? What do we have going along this axis here? In a month. Okay. So what do we have going up and down this axis? What is that? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. You can't see. So we have the temperature going up and then the months going across, which is what you were saying. Sometimes I forget that some uh -huh. of you are on, that you can't see me pointing and stuff like that when you're on Teams. Um, okay, awesome. So the blue, of course, is Bovet Island's high, I believe. Yes. And then Bovet Island's cold is red. And then Clifton's high is a peach sort of gray sort of color and then Clifton Ireland's low is purple. So here's what the information they have for you about that. Now this I actually got out of the curriculum. This is not included in your packet, but let's read it real quickly. Um, both land masses are located at about the same, actually, start with the evidence. Both that island is in the South Atlantic between South America and Antarctica. The Antarctic circumpolar current, a cold water current, flows around both that island. The average high temperature on both that island is 1.17 degrees Celsius, and the average low is negative 2.25 degrees. Clifton is on the west coast of Ireland on the North Atlantic Ocean. The North Atlantic Drift and Norwegian currents are both warm water currents and flow around Clifton Island, which has an average high temperature of 13.7 degrees Celsius and an average low temperature of 6.47 degrees Celsius. Both areas are located the same distance from a polar region near the 5.4 um, I'm sorry, near 54 degrees latitude. Near 54 degrees latitude. Yeah, baby, but I want to ask you a question. So you guys know about longitude and latitude um, yeah. from Mr. Klein, Mr. Hamilton, of course. So both of these line, both of these places are located on the same line of latitude, but do they have the same climate? According to, no. they do not. They do not have the same climate. So... Hold on, guys. Um, hold on, hold on. 
They do not have the same climate. So back to the do now from Monday. Kenya, hit it. Do places that are the same distance from the equator have the same climate? Yes or no? What you think, Blue? Yes or no? No. No. The reason it's no. Now, it looks like they will, but they don't because there are other influences on weather and climate, which is the title of this current unit, that are going to affect a climate. Um, Even if it's on the same latitudinal point, right, as another area. Good job, guys. I am feeling so good about this. Okay. (laughs) All right. So moving right along through the packet, that's how you fill that out. Um, see, this is what I have here, guys. What I have here doesn't have your graph. I'm so glad you guys let me know that. Cool. Okay, so then you are making a general statement about the results. We have gone through that. And we've gone through the vocabulary. We did that today and yesterday. We already did the weather and climate. We did that first. They have it in the packet later. We did that first. Somebody tell me, Kenya, what's the difference between weather and climate? Uh, one is does the weather change day to day or does the weather change over time the weather you do know let's look at the anchor chart the weather does the weather change over time or does the weather change day to day Mr. Williams said you're killing it me? Yeah. Can I help her? He's online. Yeah, girl. Go ahead. I mean, honey. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, the, uh, the wet, the climate, it goes for the long, the long time. Excellent. And the weather is for a short period of time. Thank you, baby. Awesome. So remember the, in the video, the man represented the climate because he was straight in that line and the dog represented the weather because he was all over the place it fluctuates day by day all right so we did that this here was um homework you were supposed to do the reading so this is pre-reading and post-reading assignments for this here now let's get into our exit ticket shout out to all of you who are still here i am so happy um let me see who's it rihanna kenya and damari yep so y'all i gotta add kenya to my my list, Kenya lives right on the corner, so that'll be easy to bring her her gift. Okay. For what? Because you've been doing such a great job. You deserve an award, boo. So here's um an article that I posted that I'd like you guys to please make sure you're reading. Um, okay, so now we're almost done. We're getting into our exit ticket, and I'll let you guys know what your homework is. So for your exit ticket, you are going to be working on the last. Um, I'm sorry, for page, pages six and seven of the reading. And the um, information that you really need is here and here. This little graph, or not graph, but key. This little key and this little explanation. And we're going to fill in this box. So. All right. So I just copied and pasted the information that they had. So um, areas marked with a high pressure symbol, H, will have good weather and clear skies. A low pressure symbol, L, like that one, um, marks areas that have bad or stormy weather. Blue indicates a cold front that can bring rain and wind in the direction that the triangular marks on the cold front line point. And a red line indicates a warm front that brings brief rain followed by warming in the direction of the sunny circles that are shown on the line. So, um, your packet is asking you guys to talk about or determine what the weather is like in Montana, New York City, which is Manhattan, by the way, and Colorado. So, what is the symbol that we see here? Uh Uh-oh. Let me come out. Um, what is the symbol? Okay. 
What symbol do you guys see um, near Montana? There's only one. In, what do you see? That's Montana. This here is Montana. What do you see? Hey, I'm sorry. What's Montana? Right here, babe. Oh, uh, it got like high pressure. Awesome, my love. So, how did you know that? Because what did you there's see? The H. There's the H. And if you're the reading, there's a symbol H. Thank you, my love. The H represents high pressure. So, the symbol um, is H. Sorry. Symbol H. And we have high pressure. And then you're going to fill it in on your own. Tell me what the weather is like. It says here what that means if the symbol H is there. All right, next one, New York City. New York City is over here. I see a blue line. What does that mean? High pressure. High pressure. So what's going on in, I sound like Riri. Cold front. We see L. So you will then fill it in and tell me what the weather is like. Awesome. Colorado. What is going on in Colorado? What do we see? First of all, there's Colorado. What letters there? Where's Colorado? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Colorado is right here. Oh, A. H, awesome. So what's going on with what's the weather? High pressure. High pressure. Now, what about the temperature, though? The temperature. Uh, warm, front. Warm, front. warm front. I love it. So we have an H for the temperature, and we also have a warm... Fantastic. A warm, warm front. front. There you go. A warm front. Now... So the H symbol and a warm front. And then, now the word symbols, I'm using symbols also for warm front. We know that that is the, the red line. Um, so let me actually put red line. So because you see a red line, you know that that is a warm front. Okay, last one actually though, for um, New York City, what type of line do we see here? What kind of front? In New York City. It's cold front. Cold front. So, and what color line is that, Bill? Blue. A blue line. Thank you, Kenya. So, a blue line means there's a cold front. Um, Oops. That's supposed to go to New York City. Now, H, Montana, does not have as much information as um the other ones. Okay? It's kind of cut off here because that's Montana. That's Montana, guys. So that's also going to help you fill this out. There's going to be a little bit more information for these two. So we said blue line. Awesome. So we have broken down. Montana has an H. So coming over here to the information, we should know what that, that means. Then we have New York has an L, but also has a blue line going through it. So you can tell me what the weather's like in New York. And then we have Colorado that has an H, but also has a red line. So then you can tell me what type of weather is in Colorado. So in the page that we got all of this from is not that one. It is somewhere down here. Here it is. So you're going to be completing this column here based on what we just did here. You will fill it in knowing that these symbols matching this key were found on the various locations, Montana, New York City, Colorado. What does that indicate regarding weather? Okay? Okay. Awesome, my loves. Okay, so we're almost done. That's your exit ticket. Then your homework. You guys did so well today. Like, I'm just so excited. Okay, so I started you off on your homework.